This is Sister Judy Raley, a Sister of Charity of Nazareth, and it is my pleasure to share with you some of the history of the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth who founded Memorial and continue to serve as an inspiration for our ministry. Mission at CHI Memorial is rooted in the legacy of St. Vincent de Paul as lived by the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth who founded CHI Memorial in 1952. In 1633, St. Vincent de Paul, along with St. Louise de Marillac, founded the Daughters of Charity in France as the first community of women to live among the people in service to the poor, rather than residing in a monastery and serving the people who came to them there. What began in France took root in a log cabin at St. Thomas, Kentucky, on December 1, 1812, when Teresa Carrico and Elizabeth Wells arrived in answer to Bishop David's call to form a community to serve the need for education of girls. The log cabin was the home of Bishop David, but he was away in Baltimore at the time, so the sisters lived here until they could build a log cabin for themselves. In January 1813, Betsy and Elizabeth were joined by 19-year-old Catherine Spaulding, who was elected leader of the group of six sisters in April 1813. Bishop David adapted the rule which St. Vincent wrote for the Daughters of Charity to meet the needs of the new community, the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth. Catherine's ability to see the needs of the poor and underserved around her and to move to meet those needs with unwavering trust in divine providence, guided the young community and are deeply rooted in the community today. Bishop David wrote of Catherine, I am watching Catherine's remarkable gifts unfold. The respect of the sisters for her authority assure me that a firm foundation is being laid. Mother is humble, courageous, kind, and loving. Her whole heart and soul are in the work she came to accomplish. She seems to be a born leader. With such a leader, the sisters will do much good. Can you see that Catherine's gifts reflect our core values of compassion, inclusion, integrity, excellence, and collaboration? When she was elected leader, Catherine chose as her motto and that of the community, the love of Christ impels us, which continues to be the inspiration and driving force of our ministry. From our small beginnings in a log cabin in Kentucky, the ministry of the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth has expanded across the world, touching many people with the love of God through education, health care, social service, and pastoral ministry in India, Nepal, Belize, Botswana, and Kenya. With the blessings of growth and a view toward permanency, and with deep faith and trust. By 1818, the sisters had built a brick school at St. Thomas to accommodate the growing number of students. Three years later, when they needed to add on to the school, Catherine discovered that they could never own the land on which they had built because of the way the will deeding the Howard property to the church was written. The extreme sacrifices of 10 years the resources that had been earned, saved, and spent to build in brick, the hopes and securities for the future were all gone. To survive as a community, to expand in mission, the sisters would have to find a new location on land they could own. The annals record that the blow fell upon Catherine as the most dire calamity she had ever known. It would be some time before she would recognize the loss and suffering as a special blessing of providence. She was then able to say, I have lived long enough to learn to take all these things just as they come. A new site was found just north of Bardstown and purchased with funds from the sale of land in Baltimore left to Sister Scholastica O'Connor, who entered the community in 1821. So it was with heavy hearts that the young community let go of what they had done at St. Thomas, and 38 sisters, a few pupils, several orphans, and two teenage slaves, who
whom women who entered the community brought with them, began anew at the site which we have called home since 1822. We purchased the property from a Presbyterian minister, Reverend Lapsley. They moved into his home and prepared a chapel in what was his study. This is a plaque which marks the site of the new Nazareth. Change is hard, but I believe Catherine and the early sisters can serve as inspiration as we face the challenges and changes in health care today. They focused on the mission and embraced the change necessary. As our ministries grew, it became necessary to seek legal status by incorporating them. There was some opposition to this due to the prejudice against Catholics, so we felt it better not to use the name Sisters of Charity of Nazareth, but Nazareth Literary and Benevolent Institution, NLBI, as our legal entity. Incorporated in 1829, it is the oldest charter of a continuously operating institution in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. The l n Railroad held a charter before us, but they are out of business. Catherine and Bishop David were appointed to design a seal for NLBI. They chose the pelican, a symbol in Christian art of Christ the Redeemer. There is a legend that if the pelican cannot find food for her young, she will pluck her breast to feed them with her blood. Another change for the young community came in 1832 when the cholera epidemic raged in Kentucky. Catherine was at our school in Louisville at the time when the mayor requested sisters to serve as nurses. They closed their school and took care of the sick in their homes. I like to think of this as our first home health ministry. Louisville is on the falls of the Ohio River, and the boats had to dock there and be towed around the falls. Cholera also plagued the passengers on the boats, and Catherine and the sisters reached out to them, caring for the sick, the dying, and the orphans. Catherine brought home two orphans she found on the wharf, whose parents had died on the boat going to New Orleans. Catherine's special concern for orphans, no doubt, came for her from her experience of being without parents as a child. In 2015, a statue of Catherine returning from the river with two orphan children was erected in front of the cathedral, which was the site of our school there in the 1830s. What thoughts run through your mind as you look at this statue in relation to our ministry here at CHI Memorial? Catherine's qualities of firmness, distinct speech, and commitment to justice revealed another facet of her character in 1834 when she received the money to cover the sisters' expenses in treating the cholera victims and noticed a mistake. She immediately wrote to the mayor and city council. But when the money was ordered from the treasury, I had the mortification to remark that instead of saying the expenses of the Sisters of Charity, the word services was substituted. I immediately remonstrated against this, and upon being promised that the error should be corrected, I remained satisfied that it had been attended to, until a late assertion from one of the pulpits of the city leads me to believe that it stands yet uncorrected on your books. If so, gentlemen, pardon the liberty I take in refunding you the amount paid for the above-named expenses, well convinced that our community would prefer incurring the expense themselves rather than submit to so just an odium. Gentlemen, be pleased to understand that we are not hirelings, and if we are in practice servants of the poor, the sick, and the orphan, we are voluntarily so, but we look for our reward in another and better world. With sincere respect, gentlemen, your obedient servant, Catherine Spaulding, Sister of Charity, February 10, 1834. The error was corrected and the money returned to Catherine. In 1836, Catherine purchased a former tavern to care for the growing number of orphans. A few spare rooms were set aside to care for the sick. This was the beginning of our formal ministry in health care. In view of today's health care costs, I find it interesting to note this in the early records of St. Joseph Infirmary, Louisville. Terms. 
room and board $7 per week, the same including medicine and the attendance of the physicians of the house, $10. The Civil War brought another challenge to the community with a request for nurses to care for the wounded of both sides. Again, the sisters closed some of their schools and even converted some of them into hospitals and served as nurses at great risk to themselves. In his letter accepting the services of the sisters, U.S. Army Brigadier General Robert Anderson wrote, Everything necessary for the lodging and nursing of the wounded and the sick will be supplied to them without putting them to expense, they giving their service gratuitously. Did you notice that this agreement reflects the agreement with the sisters in the cholera epidemic as reflected in Catherine's letter to the mayor of Louisville? Not only did the sisters deal with those injured in the fighting and the dying, but they also had to contend with infectious diseases such as pneumonia and typhoid, which took the life of Sister Lucy Dosh, a young music teacher in Paducah, Kentucky, who had volunteered to serve as a nurse. Her compassionate care for many victims of typhoid restored many of them to health. In tribute to her service, her body was taken on a boat down the Ohio River under a flag of truce to be buried among her sisters at St. Vincent, Kentucky. There were battles raging in the vicinity of Nazareth, and in recognition for our service, Senator Powell of Kentucky requested that President Abraham Lincoln issue an order to safeguard Nazareth. We have Lincoln's letter which reads, Let no depredation be committed upon the property or possessions of the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth Academy near Bardstown, Kentucky. A. Lincoln. Our service in the Civil War reflects our commitment to reverence the dignity of each person, recognizing the diversity among us. When Memorial opened in 1952, in a real sense, the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth were returning to Chattanooga. From 1890 until it closed in 1901, SCNs operated St. Vincent Infirmary, a rambling former hotel on the side of Missionary Ridge overlooking East Lake. The steps leading up to the facility still stand today. The sisters would be remembered for their compassionate, expert care of soldiers from the Spanish-American War who were at Camp Chickamauga and suffered from an outbreak of pneumonia. One of them remarked, the sisters seemed determined to leave nothing undone to restore health and strength to critically ill patients. Another wrote, though not a Catholic, I never meet one of your sisters that I do not feel like raising my hat and saying, God bless you. Several circumstances caused the hospital to close in 1901. It was five miles from the city and difficult for the doctors to travel there. Also, early cases of typhoid shook the citizens' confidence in the hospital. And Erlanger's opening brought competition. Memorial opened in 1952 in response to the need for another hospital in Chattanooga. The Hamilton County Memorial Hospital Association was formed and led by Harry Miller, H. Clay Evans Johnson, and John Crimmins, brother of Mother Bertrand Crimmins, who was the leader of the SCNs at the time. The association took up the challenge to raise $2 million for the new hospital, which they wanted to be faith-based. They needed a group to administer the hospital, and a number of denominations were approached. The Sisters of Charity of Nazareth were chosen. The first administrator was Sister Marie Victoria, pictured on the right, who with several other sisters arrived in 1952 to prepare for the opening of the hospital. Sister had never run a hospital before, but was familiar with hospitals through her role as purchasing agent at St. Joseph Infirmary in Louisville, Kentucky. She recalled, when they told me I was to be the administrator and superior, I thought the world had come to an end. Did it scare me? I think I lost 10 pounds. When the sisters first came to Chattanooga, they experienced prejudice. Sometimes the bus or taxis would not pick them up, and some people would not ride the elevator with them. 
Sister Marie Victoria reminded the sisters, we will keep focused on giving good patient care because that is why we were asked to come here. This legacy of excellent patient care continues to distinguish CHI Memorial today, guided by our value of excellence, as well as high rankings in customer loyalty. As you know, Chattanooga was a segregated city in the 1950s, and Memorial had separate facilities for white and African-American patients. This pricked Sister Marie Victoria's conscience. She set the date saying, this just isn't right. Come next Monday, we are not going to have separate restrooms, cafeterias, and patient rooms. And if any employee disagrees with that, they can pick up their paycheck. At first, some people objected and wouldn't come to Memorial, but eventually integration was accepted. This action for justice, upholding the dignity of the human person and diversity, and seeing each person as God's beloved creation, made Memorial a leader in integration in Chattanooga. Sister Marie Victoria's sense of inclusion also manifested itself in an interview for a candidate for an administrative position. The candidate said, Sister, I don't know if this will work. You know I'm not a Catholic. Sister responded, I'm hiring you to work, not to preach. He remained at Memorial serving as evening administrator for a number of years. Sister Thomas DeSales came to Memorial in 1967. Her strong, forthright, and outspoken style did not leave anyone guessing where she stood. Things did not stand still during the 20 years. She was the heartbeat of Memorial. H. Clay Evans Johnson called her Hurricane DeSales. New construction and programs, including the heart program, were the order of the day, while Sister kept her focus on the patient and the quality of care provided. She rounded on each patient every day, ensuring excellent patient care, knew all the staff by name, making sure they followed a high standard of care. At the beginning of the AIDS crisis in the 1980s, the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth successfully petitioned the legislature in Kentucky to have patients with AIDS admitted to long-term nursing facilities, including our Nazareth home in Louisville, Kentucky. Persons with infectious diseases were not admitted to these facilities. Sister Thomas DeSales was alerted that a patient with AIDS was being transported from Florida to Nazareth home to be near his family, and that the plane had to land in Chattanooga because of technical difficulties. The other hospitals in town refused to accept the patient. Without hesitation, Sister accepted the patient, and the staff worked together to care for him in an unknown and somewhat fearful and challenging situation. The COVID pandemic presented a similar situation and our dedicated staff rose to the occasion. When the person reached Nazareth home, his sister recognized Sister Mary Bennett, who was at the reception desk, as her brother's second grade teacher. Sister was a constant present to him until he died. This opened up a ministry for her and others to offer pastoral care to patients with AIDS. Over time, some 100 Sisters of Charity of Nazareth have served at Memorial, and several continue to serve on the CHI Memorial Board. These sisters have become a source of inspiration to both those who worked with them as well as those who have come after them. Since the opening of Memorial, much has changed in our society, the church, medical technology, and treatment. Catholic Health Initiative merged with Dignity Health, to create Common Spirit Health. From a 180-bed hospital, Memorial has grown into a health system with hospitals in Glenwood, Hickson, and North Georgia, as well as community health centers and outpatient and physician clinics. One thing that has remained constant throughout the years is the legacy and commitment of the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth. We are entrusted with this legacy in our daily ministry here at CHI Memorial as the love of Christ impels us.